Hi there, my name's Sarah, and this video is going to cover the basics of animation in Clip Studio Paint. I'll have additional tutorials up soon that dive into more detail. First, let's talk briefly about cells, frames, and frame rates. One second of animation is divided into a series of frames, and the image being shown can change each frame. The number of frames in one second of animation is called the frame rate. 24 FPS, or frames per second, is common in hand-drawn animation. A lower FPS, like 12 or 8, is choppier, but that might be the look you want. A cell is an individual image in the animation. You can have a cell on every frame, or you can make a cell last more than one frame if the image doesn't need to change. With that sorted, it's time to jump into Clip Studio Paint. To start a new animation file, go to the File menu and choose New. Next to Project, select Animation. For the sake of this demo, I'm leaving most of the settings as default, just changing the frame rate to 12 and the playback time to 12 frames. Click OK to create the animation file. Just a side note, Clip Studio Paint Pro is limited to 24 frames per timeline. Clip Studio Paint EX, on the other hand, allows an unlimited number of frames. You control your animation using the timeline. It may already be at the bottom of your screen, but if you don't see it, click on the Window menu and choose Timeline. You'll start with a single cell of animation nested in a clip that spans your entire playback time. The playback time is indicated by these blue brackets. You can click and drag them to make your animation shorter or longer. The currently active frame is indicated by this red playhead. Click and drag to move it along the timeline. I'll zoom in a bit. You can either use the magnifying glass buttons here, or hold down Control and the spacebar while you click and drag. Dragging left zooms out, and right zooms in. If your animation is long, hold the spacebar to bring up the hand tool, and then you can click and drag to navigate. Your cell is actually a layer inside of a special animation folder in your Layers panel. Cells get numbered by default, but you can change it to whatever you want in the Layers panel. It's a good idea to leave a number at the end. The clip is a container that does two things. One, it groups a set of cells together, and two, it determines how long each cell will show. I'll make the clip shorter by dragging this handle. If I draw something on this current cell now and press play, it only shows for part of the animation. When I drag the clip to cover the whole animation, it now shows the whole time. Place the playhead halfway along the clip and click New Animation Cell to add a second cell on that frame. Note that a new layer also appears, and CSP will try to give it an appropriate name automatically. Click Enable Onion Skin to see the previous cell in pale blue. I'll just draw a second picture here. Now if I press play, you can see it switching between the cells. I'll add a new cell halfway between these two. Now you can see that in addition to showing the previous cell, the Onion Skin also shows the next cell in green, and you can draw your new cell in between, using them both as guides. Hold down the ALT key while clicking and dragging to duplicate a frame. This is reusing the same cell, as you can see by the name. If I make a change here, it's reflected here too. You can delete a cell by clicking to select it and pressing Remove Cell. Be aware that the cell still exists in the animation folder, it's just no longer played on the timeline. If you right-click on the clip, you can see all of the cells in the animation folder here. Clicking on one will add it to the timeline. All of these cells are inside the same clip, which means we can move them around as a group. To split a clip, 
right click on the frame you want the split to occur and select Split Clip. Now these cells can be moved independently. To merge clips, hold down Ctrl and click to select multiple clips. Then right click and choose Merge Clips. Only one thing in your animation folder can show at a time, but you can create a second animation folder by clicking here. Say I wanted to use my original drawings as a reference for my final animation. I could turn on the layer color to change the color of the whole folder at once, and turn the opacity down. Remember how I said only one thing in the folder shows at a time? It doesn't have to be a single layer. Folders work too. This is great if you want to keep your ink and color on separate layers. Right-click to add it to the timeline. Now you can draw on both layers as usual, and they act as one cell. The best part is, when you add a new cell to this animation folder, Clip Studio Paint will imitate the previous cell's folder structure. I'll finish up this animation and be back in a moment. And there we go! You can use the Layers panel as normal to set up non-animation art, like your background. All layers will still appear as clips on your timeline, so if you change the number of frames of your animation, make sure to adjust their clip accordingly so they don't disappear. I'll draw in a simple background. I want to have a tree move across the bottom of the screen as though the bird is flying past it. I could copy and paste the tree on different cells, but there's an easier way that lets the program do the animating for you. Keyframes. Keyframe animation is a little different because you don't need to create an animation folder. I've just drawn my tree on a normal layer. Select the layer on the timeline, and click here to enable keyframes on this layer. Go to the Operation tool and select the Object subtool. The layer is now being treated as a keyframable object which you can move, rotate, and more. It'd be easier if the object was just the tree though. Right click on the layer and choose File Object, Convert Layer to File Object. Make sure Area is set to Drawing Area and uncheck Keep Original Layer. Hit OK. Save the file object somewhere convenient. You may see this notification, just hit OK. Now the tree is a separate file object and the bounding box surrounds it directly. Because making the tree a file object technically created a new layer, you'll need to click Enable Keyframes on this layer again. Make sure your playhead is on frame 1. Click this dropdown and select Create Keyframe Linear Interpolation. Now, click Add Keyframe. I'll talk more about this in a dedicated tutorial, but the interpolation type controls how your object moves between keyframes. Linear moves an equal amount every frame, Smooth slows down the beginning and end, and Hold just pops from one extreme to the other. In this case, the tree's just going to go from one side of the frame to the other, no slowdown needed, so we want linear interpolation. On frame 1, use the Object tool to move the tree outside of the animation. Then, on the last frame, move the tree to the other side. When you have keyframes enabled on, moving the object will automatically add a new keyframe. When you hit play, the program determines where to place the tree on every frame in between the two keyframes. It's as easy as that. I want it to go a little slower, so I'm going to double the length of the animation to 24 frames. The easiest way to do this is to right-click on the last frame and select Insert Frame. Fill in the number of frames you want to add, 12 in this case, and uncheck Selected Layers Only so all the layers are affected. Left-click the keyframe to select it, and drag it out to slow the tree's animation down. 
I also need to repeat my bird's motion. Click and drag to select all cells, then hold down Alt while you click and drag to duplicate them. You can add more trees the same way, and you're done. Now that you've made some fun animations, there's just one thing left, exporting. Fortunately, it's very easy. Go to File, Export Animation, and choose from the options there. You can choose an image sequence, animated GIF, animated PNG, or movie file. An image sequence gives you each frame of your animation as a separate, numbered still image. They're great for long animations, so you don't have to start over at the beginning if something goes wrong during the export. You can also export PNGs with transparency this way if you have an animation you want to overlay on another video. Choose the folder you want to export to at the top. Give your file sequence a name, choose the image type, the export size, and which frames to export. I haven't covered 2D cameras yet, but if your animation uses one, make sure that box is checked, otherwise you can ignore it. If you're planning to use the result in a video editing or compositing program, make sure you set the export frame rate to match your final project so your animation plays at the right speed. Hit OK, and your image sequence will be saved into the folder you picked. The settings for animated GIF or PNG files are almost identical, so I'll cover them together. When you select either one, you'll be prompted to give a save location and name. Choose the dimensions, range, and frame rate of your file, and how many times it loops. You can just match the same frame rate as your animation. For animated GIFs, the dithering option may make your exported file look better, but can increase the file size. Likewise, checking color reduction on the animated PNG settings will give you a smaller file at the cost of losing some image quality. PNGs also have an option to delete any blank space around your animated image. Hit OK to save. Animated GIFs are more widely used, but the image quality is not great. Clip Studio Paint does not export animated GIFs with transparency. Animated PNGs never gained wide support, though most modern web browsers will display them fine. The image quality is good, and they support full transparency. When you export a movie, you'll be prompted for a save location and name, and you can also choose from two options, MP4 or AVI. For MP4, you simply choose the width and height you wish to export, and the frame rate. If you're uploading straight to social media or YouTube, you can just match your frame rate to your animation. Otherwise, like with the image sequence, if you plan to use the result in a video editing program, match your frame rate to your final project settings. And again, if your animation makes use of a 2D camera, make sure that box is checked. The settings for AVI are similar, but you'll also see options for transparency and saving as a completely uncompressed file. I'm not going to dive too deep into AVI options here, but read up on them if you need the highest possible quality in your export. And that's the basics of animation in Clip Studio Paint. Like I said, I've got more tutorials in the works, so subscribe and let me know in the comments what you'd like to see me cover. Tag me with your animations at Ms. Red Nebula on Twitter and Instagram. I'll see you soon, and happy animating! A big thank you to all of my patrons, with a special shout out to Nova Tier patron Joe C. Phipps. Check out my Patreon if you'd like to help support future content like this.